it's Thursday. So today we are capping off our D&D series, for now, with an owlbear. Now I want to level with you. I'm not sure that I really nailed owlbear with this design, but I still think they came out really, really cute for what they are, so I thought I'd share them anyway. So while I prep my tools and materials, I'd really like to know what you guys do with your creations. Do you give them away? Uh, do you sell them? Or do you hoard them like I do? <laughs> Let me know in the comments down below. All right, so to start with, you're going to need five colors of eight ply, 100% acrylic yarn. So you're going to need a color for your owl, a color for your bear, color for your eyebrows, color for your eyes, and a color for your beak. So here are the colors that I have chosen to work with for today. You're going to need a pair of 21 millimeter safety eyes, and I am choosing to work with this semi-translucent amber color. You're going to need your 3.5 millimeter hook, a pair of scissors, pins and needles, and some stuffing. And optionally, you can choose to use your slicker brush. And we use that to form his very fuzzy eyebrows. So that's just brushed out yarn there. As well as some of these glass beads to act as weights in his feet. Depending on what pose you choose, these might not be necessary. But they are available in dollar stores or from landscaping or craft and hobby stores as well. But that's it. Don't forget to go and vote for the next Not My Idea pattern. Voting has been open for a couple of weeks now, and I will be closing it off in the next 24 hours or so. My patrons will get to vote in a second chance draw, and will also get a written version of today's pattern, and I will leave a link to that in the description down below. All right, let's get into it. All right, so the pieces that we're gonna make today will work for either the standing up little owl or for the one that's lying flat on his belly like this. I do have another one that is standing up. If you guys like these two, I'll release the one that's standing up as well. So just let me know by hitting the like button. And yeah, if there's enough interest, I'll release the other one as well. Okay, so where we're gonna be starting today is at the tip of the beak because the beak isn't actually sewn on. It's made all in one piece with the head and the body. So work up a couple of rows and then swap to our owl color. You can see I'm serious about busting my stash at the moment. <laughs> right, so we're gonna be starting with a magic ring. And what I'm going to do is put three single crochet into it like so. I'm just going to tighten that loop a little bit, not all the way. That's just because mine was getting a bit big. And then I'm going to chain two and that's going to form the tip of my beak. Then I'm going to go back to working into the magic ring and put another three single crochet into it. Now in all subsequent rounds we're going to skip those chains and just work into the six base stitches. Pull your magic ring tight and there is our first round. So now we're going to be working two rounds of six single crochet. So those two chains that we did in that first row should be giving you just this very slight little point, which I think just enhances the beak effect of this little nub. So with that done, what we're going to do is change to our owl color. So for me, that is this pale green. Now, as with all color changes, we should be doing them in the final stitch before we want the new color to be active. So what that means for me is that because I completed that previous round, I'm going to frog that last stitch of yellow and I'm going to do my color change in it instead. So how we do color changes for this pattern, insert your hook into the last stitch in your old color, yarn over with your old color and pull up a loop. So you've got two loops on your hook there. Hold that color out of the way. I like to hold mine down alongside my hook Then grab your new color and run it along as well. So you've got both strands running along your hook there. Pinch them at the base of your active stitch. So oh, I don't mean to flip you off there. Sorry about that. Flip, pinch them at the base of the stitch. And yarn over with your new color, pull through both of your loops to complete the stitch. And then I'm just going to give my tails there a little bit of a tug to make that stitch sit a little nicer. And so there I've got my green on my hook all ready to go. Because we are done with the yellow, what I'm going to do is trim that off. And I'm going to tie these two ends in a knot just to hold them in place. And I'm just going to use a double knot because I'm not fancy going to be tucked away on the inside anyway. And trim those off a little bit shorter if yours are a bit long. There we go. Beak is complete. We now have our green loaded onto our hook. So we're going to be working the next nine rows in our pale green. And this first one is just simply putting an increase into each of those stitches around to get us up to 12. Just like that. Okay, so for the rest of our owl rows, we're going to be working in our back loops only. And the reason we're going to do that is we'll be coming along afterwards to attach these roughly little feathers to them. So for those of you who don't know, your stitches have two loops to them. So you have a front loop, which is on the outside or the nice side of the piece, and you've got a back loop, which is on the inside of the piece. So we'll be working all of the stitches for the rest of the owl rows through the back loops only, leaving those front loops free. And we're just going to work up the rest of those rows now. So pause here to work up the rest of the owl head. So note that working in those back loops has given us this sort of ridge the whole way around this piece. 
That's good. That's what we're going to be attaching our feathers to later. So then we're going to swap to our bear color and we're going back to working through both loops from here on out. So we're going to stop now and work up the first nine rows of our bear. Okay, so now we have worked down to 24 stitches around. We are going to pop our strange looking little knobbly parrot to one side and we're going to build the eye frills. So not the eyebrows, just these, these big white eye frills. So we're going to work up the first three rows and then we have a different fourth row for the left one and the right one. So now we have these two little eye discs. Each one has four kind of frills of five stitches and one of three. So your three stitch petal is the one that's going to go up against the beak. So they're the ones that face in. So at this point, what we're going to stay. At this point, what we're going to do is grab our eyes and they're not going to go through the middle. They're going to be nestled up against the edge with the three stitch petal in it. So that the edge of your eye meets the edge of your white piece but you can still see the curve of that three petal coming fully underneath it. Note that we are not snapping the backs on yet. So there are our two eye pieces. And what I'm gonna do is we're going to stuff our base and we're gonna position these eyes now and snap the backs on. So the easiest way to position eyes to make sure that they are going where you need them to go is to stuff your piece. Now remember that the point of your beak points downwards. Position the eyes, unstuff the piece, Snap the backs on and then restuff the piece. <laughs> just like that. So now I am just going to use a couple of pins to fasten our white pieces in place because otherwise they can rotate like a potato. So the goal is the frills are all on the outer edge of the eye and it should be smooth-ish. Starting from the top of the beak and working upwards because that's where we'll attach any eyebrows that we're going to attach. So there are the eyes locked in place. Now going back to our bear, we're going to finish working up his butt. So the next row we work is going to bring us down to 18 stitches around. Just like that. And then we're going to create a little tail in this next row. So you'll be able to see here that it's just this tiny little kind of like bear bobble. That's what we're going to go with, bear bobble. So first up, we're going to work a decrease and then three single crochet. Just to get us to where we want our tail to be positioned. So the next stitch should fall relatively even between your eyes. So to form the tail, we're going to work in the front loop only. And we're going to put five single crochet into that one loop. Just like that. Now, depending on how you like to work, you might want to put a stitch marker into the back loop of that stitch because that's what we're going to be working into in the next round. We're then just going to complete that round working in both loops. So just like that. So you'll see that on one side, we've got the sort of little tail flap happening and then we've got the rest of our stitches around. So in the next row, we're going to be working six decreases to close this gap off. And the first two are really obvious. So now we've reached where we put our tail. And what we want to do is hold that tail out of the way. We're not going to work into any of those five stitches. And instead, we're going to pick up the back loop that we didn't work into in the previous round. And we're going to use that to form the next decrease. So first stitch is that back loop. And then the next one will be that first stitch after we made the tail. So you might have to twist your hook around to get both of them. And then just three more as per usual. Just like that. So we've got this tiny opening here, but you'll see here that we've got our tail it sticks off the body kind of nicely. And we didn't have to sew it on, which is just wind. So at this point, we are going to finish off. And I'm going to weave that tail through the remaining stitches like that and then pull tight like a drawstring bag and I do want to say I do apologize for putting the closing off point directly below your owlbear's tail but it really just did make the most sense at the time <laughs> all right tuck the end away so there is the little nugget that shall become your owlbear pop your nugget to one side all right so next up we are just going to create the little bear ears that sit behind the eyebrows so they are worked up just with four pretty basic rows each and you're going to want to make two of them. And they are going to go. So if you follow the inner line of that eye patch up, you're going to want your ears set a little bit back from them just to give both of them room. But basically just directly behind those plastic safety eyes tucked behind those white pieces. So there's our first one. And there is our second one. Now I'm just checking to make sure that they look like they're lined up from the side, from the top and that they're looking nice and even from the front. Right, pop the nugget aside again. 
So the final pieces that we have to make for this little guy are his front legs and his back legs. So we're going to start with the front legs, which are the same for both of these pieces. So grab your bear color and we're just going to work up the first seven rows of the front paw. All right, so with that, we are going to change back to our owl color. So I'm going to just frog that stitch just like that. And we're going to work one row in our owl color, just like that. So for the next seven rows, we'll be working one back loop only stitch down the back of the leg that we'll be using to attach the feathers with. So you have your toes at the front and those back loop only stitches will be slightly diagonal, which isn't a big deal. It's just because we're working in a spiral, but they should fall basically completely up the back of the leg. So when you stuff this piece, you're only going to be stuffing the bare portion of the foot, even though the leg will extend up above that. So we're just going to work up those seven rows now. All right, so that's the final row of the front leg. We've stuffed the, the bare portion only. And you'll note that as I went, I used a scrap piece of yarn to, and I've just tucked it through those back loops so that I can find them really easily later when I need to. That will of course just pull free when I need to as well. So it's not locked in in any way, shape or form. So I'm just going to finish this leg off and I'm going to weave the remaining tail around and pull tight the rest of those stitches and just tuck that end away just like that. So now I'm going to grab just the color I'm going to use for my eyebrows and we're going to use it to create some feathers through these loops as well. So I've just attached it to my hook using a slip knot and then starting in the back loop closest to the foot, I'm going to slip stitch to it and I'm just going to leave my um, scrap yarn in there because I can just pull that out even after stitching over the top of it. <laughs> And we're going to create a series of like chain loops between these stitches. So, so I'm going to start by chaining three and then slip stitching into the next stitch up. And then I'm going to chain four, slip stitch into the next stitch up. We're then going to chain five, slip stitch, chain six, and slip stitch. So at this point you should have four little feathers and two stitches free. And we're going to chain six again, slip stitch, and then we're going to chain five and slip stitch and finish off just like that. And now just to prove a point, this is my scrap yarn, pulls straight out. And I'm just going to tuck those two pink ends into the leg. So there is your first front leg and you are of course going to need two of those. We're going to pop these to one side now as well. All right, so now the last piece we have to make are the back feet. Right, so for today's owlbear, I am going to be making a standing one, which means I'm going to be doing these little stumpy legs here. But what I will do is down in the comments, I'm going to leave the alternate pattern for the drumstick leg in case you want to do a little lying down one like I've done here. So this one here will be down in the comments and we're going to do the little stumpy one right now. So grab your bear color, which for me is this green, and they work up exactly the same way as the front legs for the first seven rows. Okay, so now we are just going to sew all of those pieces on because after that we're going to be working in those back loops to build up our feathers, just like that. Okay, so now I have attached my owl color back to my hook using a slip stitch. What we're going to be doing is working into these loops that you can see around the head. On the little pink guy, we, I only did one round of feathers and I left the rest of it plain. You can do that if you would like to, but what I'll be doing today is the full feather treatment, which is when I coat the whole head in feathers. Now this part of the pattern can be a little bit free form because we have sewn pieces over the top of the loops and yours might not be sewn over the same stitches as mine. So first things first, we're going to do the first row of feathers and we're going to start in the last front loop that we can see right there before we changed to our bear color. And I'm just going to slip stitch to join my yarn to that first stitch. So the first row of feathers are six chains long. So I'm now going to chain six just like that. And I'm going to slip stitch into the next stitch around. And you can see there that that forms this little, little feathery loop. So what I'm going to be doing is repeating that for that whole first row of stitches. So chain six and then slip stitch into the next stitch over. Okay, so there is our first row of feathers. Now you can leave it at this point if you would like to. So what we'll be doing for the next row is chaining five and not chaining six, first of all. But second of all, we're going to just keep working around and you'll note that we start running into kind of obstacles where the ears are sitting and where the eyes are sitting. Now you have a couple of options on how you can approach that. 
So you can finish off and then reconnect and then finish off and then reconnect to work it in continuous rounds. Or you can approach it how I'm about to, which is the lazy way. And so what that entails is I'm going to work in the loops across the underside of the head until I hit the ear and can't go any further. And then I'm just going to slip stitch into the next row down and work my way back across again until I hit an obstacle. And I'm doing so, I'm just going to zigzag my way across the bottom of the head. So that's actually the sort of the easiest way I think to approach this. When I've reached the front, I'm going to finish off, reattach up here and just do the same thing, zigzagging down the top of the head. Now, what I will mention at this point is this first row of feathers were chain sixes. The second row is chain fives. The third row is chain fours. And then we do rows of chain threes until we reach the last row, which is chain twos. So just tiny little feathers on either side of the beak. So that is what I'm gonna go about filling in now. So there is the feathered head all done. It should have a nice roughly texture to it now. You should still be able to see the ears through it, of course. All right, so now we're just going to attach the legs and then we'll do the eyebrows. Pulling in all of my legs here. I'm going to start with the front legs. Now the feathers go at the back. So we're going to line the top of the shoulder up with the top of the beak. So all the way around and tuck it in under where those feathers are sitting. Just like that. And I'm going to pin it in place. And just like so. You can see that it leaves the little foot curved around the body so that it falls almost directly under that first pupil. I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. Now I'm just going to check that the, his feet are even because otherwise you'll end up with a crooked little owl bear. They're pretty good. They're a little bit off, but I don't mind a few crooked elements to my little guys. So then we're going to fold those feathers forward. All right, and now I'm going to take my little back feet nubs. I'm going to line them up behind the front feet. Just like that, a little bit of space between them, not much. I'm just going to pin those in place as well. And of course you should check that he stands up fine. So that's the standing up version. Now, if you want to do a lying down one, you still attach the front legs first. You just make sure that you run them just underneath the white frills of his eyes and you layer the back leg drumstick on top so that the point of them kind of hits the tail and the foot is just overlapping those feathers. So I'll stop for a second and just give you guys a good look because I'm not really running through this pattern today. So that's it from underneath, it's from the front, from the side, and from the top. So you want to do the little sort of cute little lying down pose that's kind of how you would do that but for now I'm just going to take some more of the green and I'm going to sew all four of these legs on and then we'll come back and do the eyebrows there we go just like that so they should pass the tug test as well and he should stand up on his own now all right so last but not least we just need to give him a fabulous pair of fuzzy eyebrows if you saw my rainbow cat video you're familiar with the technique that I'm going to use so I'm going to grab some of the color I want to use for my eyebrow. I'm going to pinch it between my thumb and forefinger and I'm going to wrap it, depending on how big your hand is, around three or four fingers. A couple of times, cut that off, then cut the loop there and cut the loop there. That should leave you with a number of these short little pieces. And what we're going to do is use lark heads knots, use lark head knots. Use lark's head knots. Am I saying that right? Lark's head. Head, lark, lark's head. Using lark, lark heads knots. Using a particular kind of knot, we are going to attach these little pieces around the outside of the whites of the eye, and then we're going to brush them using our slicker brush. All right, so the way we do these knots is you double over the strand you're going to attach. You insert your hook where you want the strand to go. You loop the middle of it over the hook and pull it through and then you pull the ends through the loop and pull it tight just like that now the how much of or how little of this you do is going to depend entirely on you so for this guy here you'll note that I continued all the way down to the middle of the eye gave him very thick bushy eyebrows whereas for this guy here uh, because the feathers were a little bit more dense I only did sort of a little bit of a wing on top and I think I'm going to do something similar to this on this guy here. So I fleshed out the rest of the eyebrow. We, I used my wire brush brushing in all directions to fuzz it right up. 
and then I combed it in the direction I wanted and gave it a little bit of a trim. So there is the finished eyebrow that I'm going with for this owl and now I'm just going to repeat the process on the other side. And there is your finished owl bear. Alright, thanks so much for watching. I will see you next week with an episode of Not My Idea. Okay, bye! <laughs>